Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada. You're watching Cars and Crosby. Z06. And I'm at my local watering hole for our local Corvettes of Southwestern Ontario's Crown Corvettes event. It's just starting up. Early bird gets the worm. We're here uh, about an hour before it actually officially starts and there's already a half lot full of cars. Uh, and today's episode, I have three Corvettes that landed. There's a Rapid Blue project that we're gonna be doing a lot of fun with. Um, there's another Corvette that's in Rapid Blue today. This is basically gonna be a Rapid Blue and Crown Corvettes episode featuring everything in the Southwestern Ontario uh, for Corvettes that we have here. And then also the four Corvettes that I have going out at my dealership starting right now. <music> All right, I'm, I'm already gravitating towards this. First car of the day to unpack. I wanted to feature this one because obviously with it being a Z06, there's gonna be a lot of traffic around it. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to go through it. Um, there might be another Z06, I shouldn't say that, but there's not a lot of these in Canada. Um, so let's unpack this. This is an Amplify Orange 3LZ Coupe. So LZ is what happens to the trim level when you go to a Z06 over a Stingray or uh, an E-Ray. It'll be um, 1LT, 2LT, 3LT for the Corvette Stingrays. Uh, but when you go to a Z06, the interior is now a 1LZ, a 2LZ, or a 3LZ. There are some differences between the interiors and that's why it's at every single level. For example, on a 1LZ, you already get the heads up display. Um, a 1LZ also gets magnetic ride control standard. So there are some things that are different between a 1LT, not to say that that is, but a Stingray 1LT and a Z06 1LT. Um, some things that I wanna show off on this specific vehicle, just because they are gonna be um, a little new, unique. This is Amplify Orange with a dual Indy racing stripe. This is carbon flash metallic, which matches all the trim in here. But look at the back end here. We've got a coupe and we have the standard arrow on here. This is a really good place to start featuring because this is gonna be um, an advantage of ordering the Dual Indy Racing Stripe with any piece of arrow. And also I think that this is a really good color for the Z06. So um, it's a really great opportunity to be able to showcase a couple of unique things. The first thing I wanna showcase is the um, mirror here. That's another thing that's a 1LZ option that you get standard now as opposed to if it's a base uh, you don't get that. So if you have a coupe and it's a 1LT, you would not get the live view camera mirror. You will on the 24 model years for everything. But as of right now, if you got a 23 Z06, that is the only vehicle in the 23 lineup that's a coupe that would still get that. Notice how they broke this up here a little bit. They didn't put the um, dual Indy racing stripes decals on there. So that's a little bit of a unique thing. And then we don't have the Stingray logo on here. We have the Twin Flags logo on the back here. And it looks like they mounted it on top of the Dual Indy Racing Stripes. This is done from the factory. And I'm really glad that they did that because look at how many pieces are actually on this Indy Racing Stripe. Even on the front here, you'll see that it is, um, <laughs> that's a good one, worth the wait. Very clever. Um, and he's also got the Amplify Orange for Team Corvette. And then back here, this is our look at the aero package that comes standard on a Z06. It is very um, McLaren-esque. It does have a very cool flair to it and a little bit more um, character than what happened on the previous Z06s. I don't think I can see any over here uh, or even just the regular Stingrays in terms of um, how these wicker bills, which is what these attachments are here with T15 screws, they mount on here. You got a little bit of an aggressive lip on here, enough to, to prove the point that this vehicle has some constructive aero, even at the base model aero package level. And I really enjoy that this is painted to the color. And then you also have the dual Indy racing stripe going through here. So this, in my opinion, just looks very clean. It looks very professional. And I would hope so if it's coming from the factory. So I just want to say that even if you don't get the aero package, you should be proud of the aesthetics that goes into your vehicle. And obviously, this beautiful 
LT6 in the coupe is on showcase. He's got nice black exhaust on here. He's got black interior. It's a 3LZ, so that means that all of this is done in nice fancy hand wrapped leather. And you'll see over there on the back of the or the doors, you have some more aggressive stitching that matches the stitching design that's on his Targa removable roof. So very well done. We have the stage two carbon fiber on here. If you are gonna be getting the stage two carbon fiber, I strongly suggest getting the stealth package. That is for all the uh, trim pieces that are uh, right there. Those uh, will be a brushed aluminum and they don't really go with anything on the vehicle. If you do get this stage two aero package, it kind of stands out a little bit. So strongly suggest if you're gonna do this stage two to also get the stealth interior package. So we've got a very cool, vibrant Z06 3LZ. You don't even need to say Z06 3LZ because you can just say 3LZ and you know right away. There's a cool little tip. And then also last but definitely not least, We've got orange calipers to match the paint and we've got ceramic brakes on here with regular ones. So this is not a Z07 and we can tell obviously because it doesn't have the arrow, but we can also tell because it has the wheels. You can see he has chosen to do the J56 um, carbon ceramic brake option, which is a cool option that you can do. So don't be limited. Uh, and you'll see that on our Z06 as well over there when we go back to it, um, that we've turned it into a non Z07, but looks like a Z07. It is still 25 minutes to the start of this Corvette event. And a little word to the wise, if you're gonna go to a Corvette show, come early because everybody that owns a Corvette comes in early. And uh, well, if you wanna get a good space, you, uh, you gotta come in early to one of these Corvette shows. Um, we got a nice 64 year Bloomington Gold NCRS, all the above. Look at this, that is gorgeous. I love the red interior. And just faint off into the distance, I saw an adrenaline red dipped hypersonic gray over there as well. So that'll be very cool. We'll go feature that. But uh, some healthy advice. If you're going to a Corvette event in particular, the early bird gets the worm. And uh, yeah, we're well, excited to see how many of these cars come in here. I think we're going to break a record today. Old school cool. <sighs> All right, guys. We got ourselves a ZR1. This is a 1991 ZR1. We have a 1990, the Black Beauty. I don't know if you've seen it on the channel before. Um, this is what we're talking about here. So L ZR1, you know, that's the highest level in the trims for a Corvette. And in the C4 generation, this was the, uh, the baddest kit on the block. Um, on the topic of blocks, this is an LT5 that had the Lotus top end and then Mercury, as you can see, Mercury Marine. They tuned the vehicle's engine, and it is one of my favorite engines of all time. And this may not look right to you, but I can assure you it is. I've talked to the owner, and he's owned it for long enough to be able to explain to me uh, with legitimacy of how this came to be. There is a powder coating on the LT5 from the factory, and this individual disassembled it and then polished it to the point where the aluminum that is underneath of the powder coating was exposed. Now, already you can hear the segue that I'm going to go into with an exposed aluminum block and it being 33 years old, 32 years old now, there's a big risk of it oxidizing over time. There is an aerospace um, sealant cover that you can protect the, the co coating from the aerospace industry um, to make it so that there's basically a thin layer that's covering it so it doesn't get oxidized. Lucky I didn't just burn myself when I touched it there. Um, but I can feel it on it. It almost feels like a ceramic coat for, for engines. And that's stopping it from being oxidized. So that is, without a doubt, a remarkable block. Look at the condition of this underneath here. With this having an open clamshell hood with the wheel wells, you know, there was always issues with um, stuff getting inside of it. But the condition of this is making my 1990 look a little rough. That is a remarkable Corvette and a remarkable block. This guy should be proud of his vet. All right, old school to new school. In terms of design, this is something that I just want to showcase because we don't see it every day. Red Mist Metallic has become a very popular color. And on a beautiful sunny day like we have today, you can see why this color has made a statement. But you don't always see a sky cool gray interior on Red Mist Metallic. So the, actually, I, I can't think of a single time that I've ever seen this. So if you're interested in designing your Corvette and you're like many people, which is choosing Red Mist Metallic for all of its reasons, this is something that you can put into your mental bank in terms of considerations 
Uh, I haven't seen one yet. Sky Cool Gray is a very obvious light tone, and it makes sense that if you're having a color that is making an aggressive statement on the outside, and I'm not trying to say that in a brash manner, but this color does the talking for you, it makes sense to have a more subtle interior inside of it. We already know that black is a really good color to accent with red mist metallic. This is a 1LT, it looks like. Uh, no, it's a 2LT. It has the GT1 seats, though, and it has just the um, interior because you can't get a dipped in Sky Cool Gray. So this is a Sky Cool Gray with the uh, 2LT interior and red mist on the outside. Very cool to consider that if you're interested in looking at a Corvette. All right, I got I to gotta pace myself. I've only been three cars, four cars down, but I found another one that's worth your time, guys and girls. This looks similar to the Z06 that we just delivered. It is a hypersonic gray with a dipped interior and beautiful adrenaline dread, but we have some tasteful accessories that I wanna showcase. It kind of, honestly, when I looked at it at first, I thought that the Z06 that I delivered last month, this was it from a distance, um, especially because it had all this carbon fiber in the center console. This is a Stingray, so it's not a Z06, but you can see that he's done a number of accessories on here including this one, which he said he found on Amazon, which is kind of a cool idea for holding your phone. But this looks like the level two carbon fiber interior package that you can get on a Z06. You'll see in here in the center console stack, he's also got one that covers the wireless charging pad. This is from the factory, obviously, because it's a GT2, but all this on the steering wheel and everything, that's all additional, and I am impressed. This in particular is an area that gets really scuffed up. If you have a more basic level interior, so a 1LT or a 2LT, this is an area with the finish that's on it um, that can get very easily scuffed. The, the semi-aniline uh, full grain Napa leather is actually a very robust material, but up to a point. It's like a mid-engine vehicle. You've got tons of power and grip, but then at a certain point, it's just all, all goes to poop. Um, and that's the case with this. So once it eventually gets scuffed up, uh, it can be very um, expensive and uh, a lot of work to get it fixed up. And this is a really great area that you can reinforce and protect it. And if you guys watch my videos when they're on the factory uh, coming off and we're doing an, a PDI for the deliveries, we leave the protection stuff from the factory on there because we don't want our technicians or somebody getting it all marked up. So a dipped interior on hypersonic gray is without a doubt a great option. I enjoy it because you've got a nice medium in terms of aggressiveness, subtle tone. It's a shade, it's a little bit more discreet. And then you've got a statement on the inside with the interior. So very cool Corvette. And then on the last topic, we've got some Aerolaris. These Aerolaris are numbered. So they are a one of 300 or 299. And it's in the same spec as the Vossens that I've been using. I am in the process of talking to uh, the owner of Aerolari, and we're just looking at making sure that the wheels and the tires that I have for my Vossens, I could swap these tires over. So that's something that I'm working on right now because I don't obviously want to have to buy a second set of larger tires for my um, my Corvette that I have right now, the rocket ship uh, with the Vossens that are on it. So hopefully I can have these exact tires here, which is our, our 325 in the rear, and then it's a 255 in the front with a 20 and a 21. Uh, going all around so very cool Corvette very sleek very um, nice but then there's a lot of little aggressive pops there like the red calipers and the red interior the wrong kind of barbecue going on today guys oh boy that sucks well this brings us to the second piece of advice for today if you have a car grab a uh, fire extinguisher I'm not driving my CA, but I have a fire extinguisher of mine. And uh, yeah, unfortunately that gentleman is probably gonna need a tow on the way out of here, which sucks, but the camaraderie is there. Look, at there was five fire extinguishers within about two minutes. No one needs to go over there and be in his face. He's obviously having a bad day now, but um, bring a fire extinguisher when you have a sports car. And uh, yeah. All right, this has been catching my eye all day and uh, I gotta talk about it. I have no idea what this color is. I'm not well versed in 69 colors, if it even is in fact original paint. But for starters, this is just an absolutely gorgeous green. A green on tan, in my opinion, earthy tones is just an amazing car, but a 69 or ain't nothing finer. This is an absolutely gorgeous Corvette. If I could find this owner and uh, maybe get him to trade me for uh, one of my Grand Sport or the the rocket ship, I would do it in a heartbeat. Four-speed transmission, no idea if it's factory air or um, 
power brakes. Yeah, yeah, we got power brakes. Um, this is just wild though. 427 inside of this girl. Oh my goodness. This is as good as it gets in terms of the, um, the C3s in my opinion. You can get a split window if you want, but look at this Targa. I love it. This is my kind of vet. Um, if I was giving my People's Choice Award, this is what it would be on today. I think that is a gorgeous combination. It's got an amazing block in it. It's a manual transmission. You've got side pipes coming out of the side here for when you're resting your arm. One of my favorite um, door handles on any car. In terms of functional design, you know, GM's always been really good at that. If you look at the door handles on the C8, it's very clever with where they hide it. And I think that that, all, in my opinion, is also uh, really evident when you look at how they kept the, the trim line from the door to the rear fender here, uh, but still made it functional for you to be able to get in and out. So this is, without a doubt, the apple of my eye at the vent so far, to, to this point. All right, a little bit of a reunion here. This is actually one of the first Corvettes that I sold in the CA generation. And this guy embodies the spirit of everything that I love about a Corvette owner. He is uh, very well versed in terms of driving his vehicle on the track and also having it for the road. And um, I've learned so much over the years with this individual. Um, he really knows what he's doing and he has the passion to do the research just like I do for you guys. I learn something from him every single time I meet with him because he's an ongoing adventure. And that to me is exactly what I am. And he's just on a different level in terms of the amount of tracking that he does. So one thing that we were just talking about was the wheels and the brakes in particular. I've mentioned on my channel that I have a track alignment on my C8. I have three degrees of camber. So this is a regular street setup for the wheels. And if you look over here, you're gonna see that the top end of the wheel is kind of pushed in a bit. That camber is so that you have a nice little dig in on the edge of your, your, um, your, your heel on that one. And that's gonna allow you to have way more lateral grip when it comes to being on a track. This vehicle, uh, in my opinion, is really great, uh, but when it's in its street setup, it lacks a little bit in terms of handling. And when you put a track alignment on it, there's a lot of people out there, including Motor Trend that has an article on it, that have left their vehicle in the track alignment and they just drive it on the regular roads. Now with it having that camber aggressively in, uh, on this case it's two degrees and we'll get back to what the two degrees means. Um, what you'll see is, is that over time with it having that aggressive camber, you're gonna have some wear on the inside, but the experience and the handling and the, and the returns that you get from that far exceed the wear that you would have on it. Now from the factory uh, specs, GM requires a three degree camber. Uh, I have that on mine and I have noted to the gentleman that owns this that it was a very aggressive camber and he responded to me saying that he actually reduced it to two degrees of camber on his. Now he's got well and above the experience that I do in terms of track daying and so I take his advice and I'm going to pass it on to you without even driving it to know that this is probably the best option or the sweet spot in terms of having it in a more aggressive stance but not wearing it out as much. The other thing that he is very well versed in is the brakes. As you guys know, when we went to the C8 generation, we got rid of a slotted rotor, but we also had the actual brake material uh, change. They, they got rid of the copper that was inside of the brake rotor. And, um, you know, we're great at a lot of applications, but there's some areas that we might have um, maybe not uh, stood up to the, the standards of what a track day driver would have been. And that's really where you're going to notice a deficiency. This individual has gone to a one piece uh, rotational rotor. Um, it's a, I think it was something by the name of gyros. I'm trying to remember a lot of information at once and do a one take here for you guys. But these are rotational slotted rotors as well on here. And he also has a nice upgraded pad in there. And that really increased the um, performance and the longevity for when he's doing track day driving. When you're driving on a track, you know, you're, you're retaining a lot of heat inside the vehicle's brakes. And the, the faster that you can dissipate that out, the longer that you can go on the track. And that's one of the biggest things that people do when they're upgrading their Corvette is they want to have something that can dissipate that heat out a lot faster. So the camber is a two degree camber on here. He's done it long enough for me to agree with him that this is probably the best Goldilocks sweet spot setup. And then in terms of the rotors, he's upgraded them in a cost effective manner in order to make it so that he can get way more bang for his buck with the same exact vehicle in a cost effective manner. He's also got a nice PPF film on here for obvious uh, reasons on the track. 
and I am just really proud of everything that he's done with this Z51. Hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, Cars and Crosby on scene live reporter here. We've got ourselves an interesting combination. I have not seen this one yet, and I want to document it so y'all can see in its glory. Hypersonic on Twilight Tension Blue. Obviously being a 3LT because Twilight Tension Blue is a 3LT only interior. This color is here to stay. So if you're interested in doing this, you'll be able to replicate this for the 24 model year. And uh, um, I think earlier when we were talking about the red dipped, I, I, the same logic applied. On a scale from one to 10, this is about a three in terms of aggressiveness and personalization compared to you know, this older blue or velocity yellow, for example, you got a 10 out of 10 in terms of personalization with that. And so it is, you've got seven more points of pop and personalization out of 10 that you can use. And he used them all up in the interior here. And that's totally justifiable. You know, this is a very subtle, sleek, under the radar kind of um, sinister color that does really good with accenting in bright, vibrant colors. And this is something that I'm surprised I have not seen more of because I think it works. It's kind of like with Ceramic Matrix Gray when they did with the blue. I really love that 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 contrast that came from it. And um, you know, the metaphor that I've always said is you don't want to have two lead singers on stage. And if you had a yellow Corvette and then you did the blue interior, it's probably not going to be your best option. But with this, it works because this is a very subtle, sleek color that's conservative, and then the interior does the talking. So. Kudos to this individual on going all out and getting a 3LT with Twilight Tension Blue and Hypersonic on the outside. All right, guys, it is two hours in and uh, I think we're just about to hit 200 Corvettes here. This is absolutely wild. We're gonna do a hot lap. We're gonna go around and showcase what 200 Corvettes look like in Southern Ontario, London, Ontario's finest and the region at the Crown Corvettes 2023. We got a Mako Shark. There is more flake in this than a guy with dandruff. And this is just absolutely wild. Look at that color, all the red in there. That is a really cool looking car. We got ourselves a C2 here. It looks like it's a 64 in a beautiful red. And then we've got Sebring Orange Metallic, which was the um, color that we just had discontinued and then we replaced by Amplify Orange. This here is a Finch Original. This is Silver Flare with a beautiful, um, this is um, a really cool interior uh, that was only available for a little while with the yellow seat belts and then uh, the ceramic interior inserts. Got some nice Vostons on here with a machine face. Grand Sport, this is a friend of mine. He's done some cool, tasteful upgrades like putting a ZR1 hood on here. Uh, he's accented out all the uh, marker lights and everything. And then he's done some ACS uh, ground effects as well. So very nicely done. Beautiful uh, 69, 427 there. All original, this is a Bloomington Gold NCRS, all the above uh, type of vehicle. Absolutely gorgeous, 50th anniversary in 50th anniversary red. We've got uh, Inferno Orange, very rare C7 color. Grand Sport, nicely done up. We've got another red Miss Metallic over here. Just seeing if I see anything else that stands out. Uh, well, we went over the Z06 and then we got a 70th anniversary. That is the pearl white color. And then we got some nice forged wheels, 3LT, twilight blue, rapid blue interior, nicely done. We're gonna get to the mid years now. Um, not to say that these uh, C8s aren't uh, cool. Some of them we featured from last year though, so we're gonna skip over them. We've got here a really crazy engine. So there's different variations of the 427 in the mid years. And this is, I believe a triple carb, uh, 427 so there's different horsepower outputs that you had and I believe that this is the one that had just under 400 horsepower uh, out of the 427 so you had 390 was the base out of the the 427s this looks like it's a triple triple carved uh, 427 so this is I think the highest if not the second highest one that you could have which is just an absolutely amazing uh, block uh, we got over here a beautiful silver another triple 427 this is just if i was going to get a mid-year this is the color i would probably get it in either that or lindale blue would probably be my second favorite color 
for the 420 or for the mid-year Corvettes. Nice Grand Sport, nicely tastefully accented. We've done the Yon Magnuson edition in the past. These are the Windsor folks. So this is from the Windsor Corvette Club. We've got a nice Superman spec here with blue and red. What else do we got over here? We're doing really good so far in terms of rhyming off things on a hot lap here. Um, I see another 70th anniversary over there. Here's a C7 that's had some work done to it. Let's take a little gander over at this and see what this C7's all about. We've got some custom uh, LT1 engine covers on there. This has got a seat overlay on it, so this is not actually the original seat. And then these are illuminated here. You can see the wire there, so at nighttime, these light up. It's kind of there to buff it the, um, the wind for when you're, uh, you're driving. We won't go over there because it's a... Um, uh, the speakers playing but if you can see there is about a hundred Corvettes from all over the region that have come to our show we've moved our show from the end of the summer to the beginning of the summer and uh, I think without a doubt this is a smashing success uh, I've pretty much picked through over there all the things like the ZR1 some track specific models um, you know what I see uh, a hard top in the same spec as what I brought with some Vossen HF7s, which was the same set of Vossens that I had on mine before I let it go. So I miss her. And uh, yeah, HF7s kind of look like a ZR1 wheel on there. He's got a very aggressive front spoiler. And then uh, 5VM rocker panels by the looks of it. And I think he's got like a straight pipe exhaust. I looked underneath it and it was pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, I think this is, uh, getting to be a little bit of a long-winded episode. Uh, I'm gonna kind of cut it to the end. I've got four Corvettes at the dealership that I'm gonna showcase for you guys. And then that's, uh, that's all. All right, three Corvettes. Let's also see what we got on the, the truck here. We've got a red Z51 on the top there. Another red one. Got lots of reds. And then a, ooh, nice uh, amplify orange, non Z06. Don't see any Z06s on this truck. Makes me feel a bit better about not getting on in this truck. But oh, on a side note, we got 25 more Z06s from uh, Bowling Green and yours truly. We got another allocation. So we are hitting 100% on every single Canadian allocation of Z06s and getting one, which I'm very happy about. I also, on a side note, uh, took a trip in the extended version of the Escalade V yesterday and I want to do a video at some point in the future figuring out if the exhaust note is even louder on the um, Escalade V over a Corvette and everything and then the short wheelbase version. 118.1 decibels was the cold start noise or sound level from uh, my shorter wheelbase. I feel like with a trumpet trombone it's just going to be even longer and making it um, that much more of a louder exhaust, but that could be something different. So we've got uh, another white one coming off and then we've got a rapid blue one. All right, a little bit of a windy one today, but uh, we're gonna get through. We got the wind tunnel from over here in the, uh, the car wash. And then we've got a hurricane of noise coming off from some LT2s as well. So that is the third Corvette that we got today. And uh, this one's a doozy. This is gonna be a really fun project. I'm very excited about this one. Not that I'm not excited about the other ones, but there's a lot of stuff going on it. We're doing some new things that we haven't done on the channel yet on this one. And uh, this is definitely one that you're gonna wanna get your notepads out for because we are gonna be putting on a clinic on how to make an already cool Corvette even cooler. All right, feast your eyes, guys and girls. We have them all unwrapped and there's a very good variation between them all here. Uh, for us to go through. We've got a low profile spoiler Arctic White, we've got a Z51 hardtop convertible here, and then we've got a Tension Twilight Blue, uh, Rapid Blue hardtop convertible as well. So lots of stuff to do. We're processing these vehicles, making sure they're absolutely perfect. And then I'll get them in the back and uh, we'll go through a walkthrough of what we're gonna be doing on these. So we've got an action packed day of Corvettes ahead of us. All right, and another project. I am officially Corvetteless. It sucks. Our last used Corvette has just sold. 
And um, while this one was pretty much brand new, it only had 1,500 kilometers on it, Rapid Blue 2LT hardtop. And we're going to be doing some stuff to it. I asked the customer, I said, is this how you want this thing to leave? He says, no, absolutely not. So we're going to be doing wheels. We're going to be doing a high wing. We're going to be doing the ACS fitments to this. And um, I don't think we're doing tint. We are doing ceramic coat on it. Um, so yeah, this is another project amongst all the other Corvettes that I have here that I'm going to have a hard time fitting all into one episode. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set you guys all up for what we're doing here. And then we'll have a closure episode on all these when they all kind of coincide for month end in a week. All right, guys, what an amazing day. And at the dealership, an amazing amount of work that I have ahead of me. In the next episode that I do, I'll be showcasing what these cars look like on their way out. I hope you enjoy this. And if you have a chance, come down to the Corvettes of Western Ontario's uh, annual show next year. We have other events that we're gonna be doing. If you're in the area and you're wanting to get involved in the social culture of Corvettes, it's an amazing inviting place and there's uh, a thing for everything. So if you're wanting to do something, uh, please reach out or check out Corvettes of Southwestern Ontario and they will help you out in getting geared up and ready for the road. I'm Morgan Crosby. Stay tuned for more awesome content and happy motoring.